Uh, in this session, we're going to have uh, Ronald Maravanika from Zimbabwe, where he's helping organize uh, PyCon Zimbabwe, uh, talking about automating industrial things using Python, uh, continuing our theme from the previous talk of using Python to solve actual real-world problems that make everyone's lives better, instead of just another web app. Cool. Please welcome Ronald. Uh, cool. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ronald. Um, a brief background about me. I'm a mechatronics engineer, uh, so I'm not really the best uh, web developer in the world. Um, I started um, working with Python about a year and a half ago. And um, I'm more into industrial automation and control. Uh, I passed Unilever. I was a project coordinator there. Uh, so this is where this project came up. But um, I have to apologize. I won't get into much details of uh, this project due to some legal issues um, because uh, it's actually no longer mine, so I couldn't get the legal issue so that I can get into much detail. But I will tell you um, how the project came up and um, the benefits of this project. Cool. Uh, that's my email address. You can get in touch with, with me if you like. Oh, so what to expect? Um, I'm going to talk about how this project came to life and um, how we are going to capture downtime using software and also the benefits, like I said. So, first things first, let's talk about downtime. This guy, he's supposed to be working, but he's not working. <laughs> Simple definition of downtime. This is the time that uh, we are losing uh, due to some reasons, maybe we have to go for lunch, uh, maybe we are out of stock, or maybe it's a breakdown, so that's downtime. And this time, we have to know the time. We have to know about it. Why? Time is money. So, what was on the ground? Uh, this was on the ground. This is a time capturing sheet for the downtime. So the downtimes are categorized into different um, categories. Uh, firstly, um, there are downtimes that we cannot avoid. People have to rest. People have to eat. We can't avoid that. Then there are downtimes that are out of our control. That's breakdown, uh, you know, stuff like that. So on this sheet, what um, operators would do, and um, for this particular company, they had uh, technical operators. Difference between an operator and a technical operator is in, um, let me give you an example. Um, after a hard day, you get home, you turn on your light, see what you want to see, go to bed. You are an operator of a light switch. Um, if you go home, turn on your light, and it doesn't work, what do you do? Probably get a candle, uh, light it, find your way to bed, and sleep. But what does a technical operator do? Uh, a technical operator gets home, turn on the light, it's not working. He may check the bulb if it is wrong. If it is right, uh, you can check the switch. That's the difference between being an operator and a technical operator. So these guys are not only responsible for operating the machine, but they are also responsible for any problems that may happen to the machine. So there's a lot of responsibility for the technical operators. 
So, he's the same guy who's supposed to record that shit. He has to operate the machine. When there is a fault, he has to attend the fault, and he has to record this shit. And the shit has to be recorded in real time. Uh, it may be a good idea to use the shit, right? Oh, look at that. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh my word. Okay, so I had to work with such handwritings for a while. You come to work every day, you see that. You don't ask him, why? He has gone home. He has finished the night shift. So you don't want to record. You are there. Um, your boss comes. What's up? Ah, I didn't say anything. He tells you, just manipulate the data. This is downtime. Downtime is equal to money. So once we have uh, false records of downtime, we are doing nothing. So what do we do now? First, we need to understand what we want to capture and why we want to capture it. We want to capture time. Um, we also want to get uh, the data uh, which is real. Real data, not raw data, not um, manipulated data. Um, how do you achieve that? Accountability, obviously, and also we need to record the data in real time. So uh, these are the basic uh, problems that we want to solve. So what are the tools? I'm an engineer. Uh, I know how to program microcontrollers, uh, stuff like that. But um, I didn't know really how to program a, a web application. So, uh, from my perspective as a mechatronics engineer, my first port of call will be using a SCADA system. That's the first port of call. Then I googled around, there was an option of using a, a web application. Uh, SCADA systems, uh, they're expensive, um, high installation costs, difficult to set up, high maintenance costs, stuff like that. Let's take a look at web application. Very cheap, uh, very low installation cost, and it's easy to set up. So, what do we choose? What do we put there for the web applications? Okay, in Zim, these are the three main components of uh, web development. Uh, of those, I chose uh, Python. Why? Simple syntax. Like I said, I'm not the best web developer. I'm an engineer, so I need simple syntax. Um, WordPress, for me, no. You can choose it. PHP, for me, no, you can choose it. Okay, so for Python, what are the web-based frameworks? Django, Flask, and Pyramid. And since I'm not an experienced web developer, again, I will choose Flask. Why? It's lightweight, it's easy to manipulate. So let's see why we chose Python. This is our problem. Remember what we want to capture. We want to capture time. Python is this good library for date and time. Um, it can handle uh, the, dat the, the, the date and time either as a string or as a digital figure using the STR F time and STR P time. Uh, for the downtimes, we will be recording them in real time. So we need to subtract the last time from the initial time. So 
Python is a good way to handle that using um, time delta. Um, Flask, it's lightweight and um, it works with uh, MySQL database. You will know why I chose MySQL later. And th there are these things called WTORIMs. What I see when I look at that, what the forms, you know. Um, so, how do we trigger the time? Easiest way is to use a button. I have a friend of mine uh, back home. He used these phones with a button. And I was like, man, you're using a phone with a button. Is it a shirt? And he was like, what? What are you talking about? No one uses uh, phones with buttons these days. They are all now touch screens. So if you are using one with buttons, that's a shirt. It's not a phone. So let's use buttons. Um, easiest way, start, stop. Remember, this is a technical operator. He has to go to, to, he has to, go to make sure that the machine is running. So let's say there is a breakdown. He presses the start button. The time starts to record. He fixes the machine when he's done. Stop. We have recorded the time. It's already into the database. Why MySQL database? Um, there is already an existing database at the company, and it's in Microsoft Access. So with uh, MySQL, you can easily um, export data to, to Excel. Once you export it to Excel, it means I don't have to change my database. Yay! So easy work for me. I'm lazy. Oh, so the tracking issue. There are different operators. Why? Because there are different shifts. Uh, morning shift, afternoon shift, and night shift. So we need to track who was doing what at this particular time. Um, obviously, we have to, to create a, 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 a login for our users using uh, the WTORMs. And um, we also have to assign an operator a unique code. Why? So that we can track them. Um, we need to account for time. So what happened with that sheet is that um, the technical operator, because he has a lot to do, he sometimes forgets to record the sheet. And what does he do when that happens? He puts the missing time to what we call speed loss. Speed loss, this is the time uh, we have set our machine to work at. Let's say there are sachets of uh, OMO. We know that our machine produces 100 sachets per minute. But for some reason, today it's producing five per minute. So all the time that the technical operator did in the account, he would push it to uh, speed loss. And people would crack their head. Why are we having this speed loss? The machine is okay on its own, but we are having speed losses. This was because um, he couldn't fill in the form, so everything else was put on to speed losses. So, um, what are the benefits of uh, this uh, web application? Uh, we have increased accountability because the downtime is how we rate how we perform. That's how we rate how we perform. Um, 
what we look at when we are in a factory, we look at what is called uh, overall equipment effectiveness. Uh, engineers uh, call it OEE. This is how we rate uh, how we produce things. So what we do is um, the downtime is rated uh, per, per specific task. What I mean is um, if we have a lot of breakdowns, our machine is not working well. We need to get a new machine or we need to fix that particular machine. Then um, secondly, it's a digital way to capture data. Uh, there's this um, tendency in factories of uh, papers. If you move on to in different African factories, uh, you see a lot of papers. For that sheet I showed you before, the company policy was to keep the sheet for three years. And we are having these sheets every day. And we have to keep these sheets three years. So imagine, uh, after three years, the pile of sheets you are going to have. So this web, web application is a good way to move from the paperwork. Um, at that particular company, I won't say, uh, they had this policy of a zero waste to land view. What does that mean? They mean um, there is no waste they are producing that will go to the land. So paper in the Zim was not being recycled, bond paper. It wasn't being recycled. At the end of the day, uh, the safety and the health officer will find a way to dump those papers elsewhere. So having this application will enable us to, to have a, an environmentally friendly way um, where we are capturing data without losing losses. Then for our technical operators, like I said, these guys run around a lot. We need to take of uh, some of the things uh, they do. Um, it's a cheap way to, to reduce downtime as compared to SCADA systems. Um, SCADA systems, these are supervisory um, and uh, data acquisition systems where we set up um, sensors, uh, microcontrollers, um, PLCs to record data and uh, they work well, but problem is that they are so expensive to set up. A SCADA system is so expensive to set up. So using a web application will be easy for us to record the data at the same time minding our costs. So um, that's why we, 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 we need this web application. Uh, so, who do we target now? Um, I think we should target uh, manufacturing companies, uh, the likes of uh, Unilever, Nestle, uh, Delta, those are manufacturing companies. If you go to the factory these days, there's still a lot of paperwork. Um, it's a good way to get money, but in an easy way. Because uh, most web developers, they are after um, individuals. Uh, uh, you go for people who are looking for cigarettes, people who are looking for pizza, stuff like that. But for the factories, uh, they need this thing, but it's not yet there. Reason why, it's because usually programmers spend their time in the office. Programmers spend their time 
creating other things so the factory or industrial uh, environments lay out in terms of uh, web applications and also android applications so uh, those are good target markets um, we can also go for mining companies and um, platinum refining companies there's too a lot of paperwork there to be done so it's another good way to check out mm, that's all from me and uh, thank you Uh, thank you. We have quite a lot of time for questions. Um. Um, hi, great talk. Um, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, how did you handle adoption uh, with the operators and learning the system the first time? And then the second one is, does the system cater for human error? Um, for instance, I start, you know, and then I go and solve the problem, and then I go somewhere else, and I forget to um, hit the stop button. Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't have any problem with uh, training the technical operators, because these are technical people. They are actually, they were actually excited about uh, the web application. Because uh, it was a lot easier for them. Then for the human error, uh, that's an area of improvement. Um, I didn't find a way to, to really cater for human error to say if the guy forgets. But like I said, what I did was to make sure that the person will be accountable. So once that person is accountable, uh, maybe if um, you had attended Anna's talk, unemployment rate in my country is 90%. So virtually everyone is unemployed. So if this guy makes an error, and we know he made an error, then for some reason we just say, no, come to work. Trust me, you won't forget next time. But there is 90% unemployment rate. That's virtually everyone is unemployed. So it's an area of improvement, but for now, I didn't have any problems uh, from the company. Uh, is your... Uh, up uh, open source, have you opened it up for others want to improve it? Mm, no. Uh, like I said, uh, I almost didn't present this. Uh, I actually had to change my talk because I had some legal issues uh, with the company. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't allow me to give you their information because uh, it's no longer mine, actually. Uh, it was mine, but I want you to invest in such areas. So it's not open source, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, one thing that has fascinated me when I got here is I don't have to open the tape. I just need to put my hands below, and then uh, it, sen uh, it senses my hand, and the water comes out. So did you, or do you have plans to automate the part of start and stop buttons to use a sensor, uh, maybe use a microchip to sense that the machine is stopped, so this is downtime. Uh, once it has been fixed, when the machine starts running, it's now up, then uh, they stop so that there is no need for human intervention in uh, pressing the start and stop button. Mm, thank you for that question. Um, yes. Uh, Basically, like I said, I'm an automation engineer. Mechatronics is basically more of, a, of automation. The challenge with that was uh, we need to categorize the downtimes 
Because um, if you can predict uh, what's what, that's the challenge. We have to eat. We can't avoid that. But let's say there is a breakdown. How do we analyze this breakdown? Because for every breakdown, we have to do a breakdown analysis to say, um, let's say maybe the sealer is not working well. Uh, we hire guys to fix the sealer. The next time the sealer breaks, we, we have to see that the sealer is broken and we have to analyze that. Because what happens is the guys can come, just spend their day opening the machine, no one is around, then they go back. But if the sealer is continuously breaking down and we notice that, that's where we can take action. So for now, um, it's kind of uh, hard for me to automate the process because we have to categorize the downtimes. But um, if you can find a way to categorize the downtime while automating it, I think um, we can share the chunk of money. Uh, what is the uh, what was the interface that the um, users that the technical operators uh, used to to put the data in? Was it was it a terminal in the factory or um, did you have a I don't know a iPad or, or something? How did they interact with the system? Yeah, okay. For every technical operator for that particular company, uh, an iPad was allocated. So initially we used iPads, but um, eventually we had. Uh, a big screen monitor uh, just beside the machine so that uh, you can type uh, and start recording the times. Uh, hi. This one. Hi. Uh, thanks for your talk. Um, my question is to do with the developers that you mentioned earlier um, that are working on other projects, I think you said. Are those in-house developers and uh, why is it that the com in inside the companies those developers aren't picking on these opportunities and working on them themselves? Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned about uh, developers. Um, I worked the, on this project alone. Actually, this project was um, an educational requirement. I got this uh, scholarship from um, Econet, Econet Wireless. So after the scholarship, we were required to do a project so I did this as an educational requirement. But um, when I was working on it, uh, the plant manager came to my office. So I was working on this stuff and he was like, what is this? And I said, this is cool stuff. And we tested the thing. He was excited, brought the idea upstairs. Guys liked it. So. I didn't have anyone else. I worked on the project alone. Okay. Uh, I thought what he meant was uh, why are developers like me, IT developers, working in the company that you were working uh, in didn't develop the app? Right? Oh, okay. Now I get the question. Oh, pretty cool. Um, simple. Because they don't know about it. That's a simple thing. Uh, how many of you knew about factory downtime in here? Pretty cool. I can see guys from J5. <laughs> <laughs> Why? They work with it. So virtually they don't know what factory downtime is. So if you don't know what the problem is, you can't solve the problem. So. The problem is problem identification. It's not about solving the problem. Now I have told you, you can go to any factory and solve the problem. But if you don't know about the problem, you can't solve the problem. That's great. Thanks for that. Um, and then as a follow-up, um, so my thinking was, is there an opportunity there um, 
as someone who's now outside a company like that, for you to set up something where you'll be able to apply it in lots of other companies or to look at these um, automation opportunities. So if they have their own internal developers, once they catch on to this, will they able to do, them them, do it themselves? Or is it also like a big opportunity for you to do that um, as, a consulting, as a consulting project, for example? Um, what happened was um, my plan with this thing was uh, to make it for everyone. But uh, they offered a lot, so <laughs> I couldn't resist. Yeah, I couldn't resist. But um, I think it's good to make it for everyone. Yeah. Um, so I have a follow-up on the human error thing that I uh, asked okay. about earlier. And just an idea, picking up from what Anna said. Um, s since since um, each machine has a screen nearby, right, and the system is already categorizing um, the different types of errors, mm -hmm. that means the system would be we can make the system able to learn that this particular machine um, always gets these types of errors and it's always down for, let's say, 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And so when it hits the 45 minute mark, um, maybe an alert can come up saying, um, is this still down? Just to remind um, whoever has entered the error that they've forgotten to switch it off or something like that. Okay, I think... Um that's a good one, but the um, problem with uh, downtime is that uh, we can't predict what's going to happen. Sometimes the machine goes down for days. We can fix it for days. So it's a challenge, but uh, I think we can work on it. Yes. You said you had to learn Python from, or Flask from scratch. Are there any good tutorials or resources you can recommend for a beginner? Um, for me, uh, everything, I owe it to a guy who owns um, pythonprogramming.net. Uh, that's where I learned everything. So I learned through Treehouse, but Treehouse, it's more of uh, syntax learning uh, but uh, for python programming.net it's practical application so i owe everything to that to to, to that guy uh, he's an american guy i think yeah so you can check that out any more questions I'm just curious about the economic environment in Zimbabwe and how that relates to the software industry there. So, like, is there quite a lot of local software development happening that you're able, like what you're doing, or, and are the targets mostly international companies? Okay. Um, software development in Zim, it's mostly websites. Um, a lot of people are programmers, but they program websites, not uh, useful things. And uh, when, <laughs> when it comes to Python, Python is not uh, common in them. Actually, if you walk around saying, I'm going to a Python conference, people will be like, <gasps> What? <laughs> Satanist, you know. <laughs> so Python in Zim, you have to specify that Python script language. It's a programming language, otherwise they will call you a witch. <laughs> yeah. So there are um, investment opportunities if you can uh, develop uh, web applications or even Android applications. It's an area to invest. Um, the companies which are running in Zimbabwe right now, they are actually big companies. And if you get an opportunity to work with them, um, it's a good way. 
Um, I've got a follow up on that question to do with economics I was asked. Sorry. Uh, so again, question to do with economics and opportunities around um, you know, the tech space. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would you say is the biggest barrier? Um, you mentioned earlier um, something to do with knowing the problems. What would you say is the biggest barrier for programmers uh, and developers in Zim right now is for them to start up these things um, that are not only um, web, 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 um, web development? Uh, so uh, what, what I think is a problem, it's in our education sector. Mm, it's not... Um, it's not there for practical purposes. It's there so that you know it. Uh, when I was in the first year, I did um, C programming. Uh, I just saw the black screen, and I used to watch movies, hackers working on the black screen, and I was like, so how do these guys use this to hack? Uh, in Zimbabwe, the education sector is um, more of uh, passing. You read, you pass, you forget. It's not about reading to know. That's the challenge. So I think if we change from um, reading to pass to reading to know, we can solve uh, the problems. Because sometimes we can identify the problem, but we don't know how to tackle the problem. That's the challenge. Um, I had that challenge through Treehouse. Basically, I learned the syntax, but after that, I said, what now? Because I didn't know anything. How even to, to, to start a, a web application, I didn't know how to to do that. So if you check the colleges, it's more of teaching the syntax itself, not the practical part. So I don't know. Maybe one of you can invest on that. And I assure you, Zimbabweans will, will come for that. It's definite. We still have time for another question or two. Oh. Yeah, sorry, just one question for me is, um, you did this for Unilever, right? While you were there. Or I'm not allowed to say that. You did this for the company <laughs> that's not allowed to be mentioned. Yeah. Um, so if you do similar things to, um, for, for other companies, for, for mines and other industries, um, do you see any challenges at actually getting in there with your um, pitching them on, on your solutions? Because I know these big companies can sometimes be a bit difficult to work with if you're just um, a s the developer on your own. Um, that's true. Mm, in Zimbabwe, I think I will have the challenge on that because um, we have um, a high corruption rate. You have to know someone for you to do something. So uh, for now, I'm with um, a great chance because I can recommend the guys I did the project for to recommend me to the other guys. So maybe I'll be getting into the mining companies and try to see what I can do. Cool. Uh, thank you very much, Ronald. It was a very interesting talk.